Sahih al-Bukhari, the book of invocations, and the statement of Allah, and your Lord said, invoke me, that is, believe in my oneness, Islamic monotheism, and ask me for anything. I will respond to your invocation. Verily, those who scorn my worship, that is, do not invoke me, and do not believe in my oneness, Islamic monotheism, they will surely enter hell in humiliation. Quran Chapter 40, verse 60. Chapter on, for every prophet, there is one special invocation, which is surely granted by Allah. Narrated Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, For every prophet, there is one special invocation, that will not be rejected, with which he appeals to Allah. And I want to keep such an invocation, for interceding for my followers in the hereafter. Narrated Anas that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, For every Prophet, there is one special invocation that surely will be responded by Allah. Or said, For every Prophet, there was an invocation with which he appealed to Allah, and his invocation was responded by Allah in his lifetime. But I kept my, this special invocation, to intercede for my followers on the day of resurrection. Chapter on Afdal al-Istighfar The best way of asking for forgiveness from Allah and the statement of Allah Ask forgiveness from your Lord Verily, He is oft forgiving He will send rain to you in abundance and give you increase in wealth and children and bestow on your gardens and bestow on your rivers Quran chapter 71 verses 10 to 12 and also the statement of Allah, and those who, when they have committed fahisha, illegal sexual intercourse, or wronged themselves with evil, remember Allah and ask forgiveness for their sins, and none can forgive sins but Allah, and do not persist in what wrong they have done while they know. Quran, chapter 3, verse 135. Narrated Shaddad ibn Aws, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The most superior way of asking for forgiveness from Allah is, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta, khalaqtani wa ana abduka, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma stata'tu, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'tu, abu'u laka bi ni'matika alayya, wa abu'u bi dhanbi, faghfir li, innahu la yaghfir al-dhunuba illa anta. O oh Allah, you are my Lord. None has the right to be worshipped but you. You created me, and I am your slave, and I am faithful to my covenant and my promise to you as much as I can. I seek refuge with you from all the evil I have done. I acknowledge before you all the blessings you have bestowed upon me, and I confess to you all my sins. So I entreat you to forgive my sins, for nobody can forgive sins except you. The Prophet peace be upon him added, if somebody recites it during the day with firm faith in it and dies on the same day before the evening, he will be from the people of paradise. And if somebody recites it at night with firm faith in it and dies before the morning, he will be from the people of paradise. Chapter on the Prophet, peace be upon him, seeking of Allah's forgiveness by daytime and at night. Narrated Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. I heard Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, saying, By Allah, I seek Allah's forgiveness, and turn to him in repentance for more than 70 times a day. Chapter on at tawbah Returning to Allah in Repentance Qatada said, Turn to Allah with sincere repentance. Quran, chapter 66, verse 8 means true and constructive repentance. Narrated Al-Harith ibn Suwayd, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud related to us two narrations, one from the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the other from himself, saying, A believer sees his sins as if he were sitting under a mountain, which he is afraid may fall on him, whereas a fajr, 
wicked evildoer, considers his sins as flies passing over his nose, and he just drives them away like this. Abu Shihab, the sub-narrator, moved his hand over his nose in illustration. Ibn Mas'ud added, Allah's messenger peace be upon him said, Allah is more pleased with the repentance of his slave than a man who encamps at a place where his life is jeopardized. But he has his riding animal carrying his food and water. He then rests his head and sleeps for a short while and wakes to find his riding animal gone. He starts looking for it and suffers from severe heat and thirst or what Allah wished him to suffer from. He then says, I will go back to my place. He returns and sleeps again and then getting up, he raises his head to find his riding animal standing beside him. Narrated Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, Allah's messenger peace be upon him said, Allah is more pleased with the repentance of his slave than any one of you is pleased with finding his camel, which he had lost in a desert. Chapter on Lying on One's Right Side Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to offer eleven rak'ah prayer in the late part of the night. And when dawn appeared, he would offer two rak'ah, sunnah of the fajr, and then lie on his right side till the mu'addin came to inform him that the fajr compulsory congregational salat prayer was due. Chapter on the superiority of a person who sleeps with ablution. Narrated Al-Bara ibn Azib, may Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said to me, When you want to go to bed, perform ablution as you do for salat, prayer, then lie down on your right side and say, Allahumma aslamtu wajhi ilayka, wa fawwattu amri ilayka, wa aljatu dhahri ilayka, raghbatan wa rahbatan ilayka, la malja'a wa la manja minka illa ilayka, amantu bi kitabika alladhi anzalta, O Allah, I have submitted my face, or myself, see hadith number 6313, to you, and I am under your command, that is, depend upon you in all my affairs, and put my back to, that is, entrust in, you, expecting your reward and fearing your punishment. There is no fleeing from you, and no refuge but with you. I believe in the book, that is the Qur'an, you have revealed, and in your Prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have sent. See Fathul Bari. If you should die then, after reciting this, you will die on Al-Fitrah, the religion of Islam, that is, as a Muslim. So let these words be the last you say before going to bed. While I was memorizing it, I said, وَبِرَسُولِكَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلْتَ in your messenger whom you have sent. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, No, but say, وَبِنَبِيِّكَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلْتَ In your Prophet whom you have sent. Chapter on what to say on going to bed. Narrated Hudayfa. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, went to bed, he would say, بِسْمِكَ أَمُوتُ وَأَحْيَا With your name I die and I live. And when he got up, he would say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur All thanks and praises be to Allah who has given us life after causing us to die that is sleep and unto him is the resurrection Narrated Al-Bara ibn Azib that the Prophet peace be upon him advised a man saying if you intend to lie down that is go to bed say Allahumma aslamtu nafsi ilayka وفوضت أمري إليك ووجهت وجهي إليك وألجأت ظهري إليك رغبة ورهبة إليك لا ملجأ ولا منجا منك إلا إليك آمنت بكتابك الذي أنزلت ونبيك الذي أرسلت O oh Allah, I have submitted my face or myself to you and I am under your command that is depend upon you in all my affairs and put my back to that is, entrust in, you, expecting your reward and fearing your punishment. There is no fleeing from you, and no refuge but with you. I believe in the book, that is, the Qur'an, you have revealed, and in your Prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have sent. 
And if you should die then, after reciting this before going to bed, you will die on Al-Fitra, the religion of Islam. Chapter on putting one's right hand under one's right cheek on sleeping. Narrated Hudayfa, may Allah be pleased with him. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, went to bed at night, he would put his hand under his cheek and then say, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. With your name I die and I live. And when he got up, he would say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhi nushur All thanks and praises be to Allah, who has given us life after causing us to die, that is, sleep, and unto him is the resurrection. Chapter on Sleeping on the Right Side Narrated Al-Bara ibn Azib, may Allah be pleased with them. When Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, went to bed, he used to sleep on his right side and then say, Allahumma aslamtu nafsi ilayka, wa wajahtu wajhi ilayka, wa fawwattu amri ilayka, wa aljaatu dhahri ilayka, raghbatan wa rahbatan ilayka. La malja'a wa la manja minka illa ilayka. Amantu bi kitabika alladhi anzalta, wa nabiyika alladhi arsalta. O oh Allah, I have submitted myself and faced my face to you, and I am under your command, that is, depend on you in all my affairs, and put my back to, that is, trust in you, expecting your reward and fearing your punishment. There is no fleeing from you and no refuge but with you. I believe in the book, that is, the Qur'an, you have revealed, and in your prophet, Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have sent. See Fathul Bari. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Whoever recites these words before going to bed and dies the same night, he will die on Al-Fitra, Islamic religion as a Muslim. Chapter on the invocation which may be said by one who wakes up at night. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. One night I slept at the house of Maymuna. During the night, the Prophet, peace be upon him, woke up answered the call of nature, washed his face and hands, and then slept. He got up late at night, went to a water skin, opened the mouth thereof and performed ablution, not using much water. Yet he washed all the body parts properly and then offered the salat, prayer. I got up and straightened my back in order that the Prophet, peace be upon him, might not feel that I was watching him. And then I performed the ablution. And when he got up to offer the Salat, prayer, I stood on his left. He caught hold of my ear and brought me over to his right side. He offered thirteen raka'ah in all, and then lay down, and slept till he started blowing out his breath, as he used to do when he slept. In the meantime, Bilal informed the Prophet, peace be upon him, of the approaching time for the Fajr Salat. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, offered the Fajr Salat without performing new ablution. He used to say in his invocation, Allahumma ja'al fi qalbi nooran, wa fi basari nooran, wa fi sam'i nooran, wa an yamini nooran, wa an yasari nooran, wa fawqi nooran, wa tahti nooran, wa amami nooran, wa khalfi nooran, wa ja'al li nooran. O oh Allah, let my heart have light, and my sight have light and my hearing sense have light. And let me have light on my right, and have light on my left, and have light above me, and have light under me, and have light in front of me, and have light behind me, and let me have light. Quraib, a sub-narrator, said, I have forgotten seven other words, which the Prophet, peace be upon him, mentioned in this invocation. I met a man from the offspring of Al-Abbas, and he narrated those seven things to me, mentioning, Let there be light in my nerves, my flesh, my blood, my hair, and my body. And he also mentioned two other things, the brain and the bones. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. When the Prophet, peace be upon him, got up at night to offer the night salat, prayer, he used to say, Allahumma lak alhamdu. أنت نور السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن ولك الحمد أنت قيم السماوات والأرض ومن فيهن ولك الحمد أنت الحق ووعدك حق وقولك حق ولقاءك حق والجنة حق والنار حق والساعة حق 
والنبيون حق ومحمد حق اللهم لك أسلمت وعليك توكلت وبك آمنت وإليك أنبت وبك خاصمت وإليك حاكمت فاغفر لي ما قدمت وما أخرت وما أسررت وما أعلنت أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر لا إله إلا أنت or لا إله غيرك O Allah, all the praises and thanks be to you You are the light of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them And all the praises and thanks be to you You are the keeper of, one who looks after, the heavens and the earth and whatever is in them And all praises and thanks be to you You are the truth and your promise is true And your sayings are true And the meeting with you is the truth And the paradise is the truth And hell is the truth And the hour is the truth And the prophets are true And Muhammad, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, is the truth O Allah, I submit myself to you And I depend on you And I believe in you And I turn in repentance to you And in your cause I fight And with your orders I rule So please forgive my past, present, and my future sins, and whatever I have done in secret, and whatever I have done in public. You are the one who makes the things go before, and you are the ones who delays them. None has the right to be worshipped but you, or none has the right to be worshipped other than you. Chapter on Saying Takbir, Allahu Akbar, and Tasbih, Subhanallah. On going to bed Narrated Ali May Allah be pleased with him Fatima may Allah be pleased with her Complained about the blisters on her hand Because of using a millstone She went to ask the Prophet Peace be upon him for a servant But she did not find him at home And had to inform Aisha of her need When he came Aisha informed him about it Ali added The Prophet, peace be upon him, came to us when we had gone to our beds. When I was going to get up, he said, Stay in your places, and sat between us till I felt the coolness of his feet on my chest. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then said, Shall I not tell you of a thing which is better for you than a servant? When you both go to your beds, say Allahu Akbar 34 times, and Subhanallah 33 times and Alhamdulillah 33 times, for that is better for you than a servant. Ibn Sirin said, Subhanallah is to be said for 34 times. Chapter on Taking Refuge with Allah from Evil and Recitation of Quran Before Going to Bed Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Whenever Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, went to bed, He used to blow on his hands while reciting the Mu'awwidat, that is, Surat Al-Falaq and Surat An-Nas, number 113 and 114, and then pass his hands over his body. Chapter on Invocation When Anyone Going to Bed Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, When any one of you go to bed, He should shake out his bed with the inside of his waist sheet, for he does not know what has come on it after him. And then he should say, Bismika Rabbi wada'atu jambi, wa bika arfa'uhu. In amsakta nafsi farhamha, wa in arsaltaha fahfadha, bima tahfadhu bihi ibadaka salihin. O my Lord, in your name I put my side over this bed, and with your name I will lift it up therefrom. If you take my soul, Bestow mercy on it, and if you release it, protect it as you protect your righteous slaves. Chapter on Invocation in the Middle of the Night Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Our Lord, the Blessed, the Superior, comes down every night on the nearest heaven to us during the last third of the night and says, Is there anyone who invokes me? demands anything from me, that I may respond to his invocation. Is there anyone who asks me for something that I may grant him his request? Is there anyone who seeks my forgiveness that I may forgive him? See Volume 2.
حديث نمبر 1145 فوتنوت صفات الله Qualities of Allah All what has been revealed in Allah's book, the Quran, as regards the sifat. Qualities of Allah, the Most High, like His face, eyes, hands, shins, legs, His coming, His istiwa, rising, over His throne, and His other qualities, or all that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon Him, qualified Him, in the true authentic Prophet's ahadith, narrations, as regards His qualities, like Nuzul, His descent, or his laughing, and others. The religious scholars of the Qur'an and the Sunnah believe in these qualities of Allah, and they confirm that these are really his qualities, without ta'wil, interpreting their meanings into different things, or tashbih, giving resemblance or similarity to any of the creatures, or ta'til, that is, completely ignoring or denying them, that is, there is no face, or eyes, or hands, or shins for Allah. These qualities befit or suit only Allah alone, and He does not resemble any of His creatures, as Allah's statement in the Qur'an, 1. There is nothing like unto Him, and He is the All-Hearer, the All-Seer. Qur'an, chapter 42, verse 11. 2. There is none comparable unto Him. Qur'an, chapter 112. Verse 4 Chapter on what to say when going to the lavatory Narrated Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. Whenever the Prophet, peace be upon him, went to the lavatory, he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-khubthi wal khaba'ith. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from the bad and evil things. Chapter on what to say when one gets up in the morning Narrated Shaddad ibn Aws, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The most superior way of asking for forgiveness from Allah is, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa anta, khalaqtani wa ana abduka, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika mastata'tu, abu'u laka bi ni'matika, wa abu'u laka bi dhanbi, faghfir li, fa innahu la yaghfiru dhunuba illa anta, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sanatu. O oh Allah, you are my Lord. None has the right to be worshipped but you. You created me and I am your slave. And I am faithful to my covenant and my promise to you as much as I can. I acknowledge before you all the blessings you have bestowed upon me and confess to you all my sins, so please forgive them, as no one can forgive sins except you. And I seek refuge in you from all the evil I have done. If somebody recites this invocation during the night, and if he should die then, he will enter paradise, or he will be from the people of paradise. And if he recites it in the morning, and he should die on the same day, he will have the same fate, that is, will enter paradise. See hadith number 6306. Narrated Hudayfa, whenever the Prophet, peace be upon him, intended to go to bed, he would recite, Bismik Allahumma amutu wa ahya. With your name, O Allah, I die and I live. And when he woke up from his sleep, he would say, Alhamdulillahi alladhi ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur All the praises and thanks be to Allah, who has made us alive after he made us die, sleep. And unto him is the resurrection. Narrated Abu Dharr, whenever the Prophet, peace be upon him, lay on his bed, he used to say, Allahumma bismika amutu wa ahya. O Allah, with your name I die and I live. And when he woke up, he would say, Alhamdulillah alladhi ahyana, ba'dama amatana, wa ilayhi nushur. All the praises and thanks be to Allah, who has made us alive after he made us die, sleep, and unto him is the resurrection. Chapter on Invocation During the Salat Prayer Narrated Abdullah ibn Amr, may Allah be pleased with them. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, may Allah be pleased with him, said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, teach me an invocation with which I may invoke Allah in my salat, prayer. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, say, Allahumma inni dhalamtu nafsi dhulman kathiran, wala yaghfiru dhunuba illa anta, faghfir li maghfiratan min indika, warhamni, innaka anta al-ghafurur rahim. O oh Allah, I have done great wrong, 
injustice to myself. And there is nobody who forgives except you. So please forgive me with forgiveness from you, and be merciful to me, as you are the oft forgiving, most merciful. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The verse, and offer your salat, prayer, neither aloud, nor in a low voice. Quran, chapter 17, verse 110, was revealed as regards invocation. Narrated Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him. We used to say in the Salat, prayer, As-salam be on Allah, As-salam be on so and so. One day the Prophet, peace be upon him, told us, Allah himself is As-salam. When any one of you sits during his Salat, prayer, in sitting posture, he should say, at tahiyyatu lillahi, up to As-salihin. All the compliments are for Allah up to righteous people. For when he recites this, then he says as to all the righteous people present in the heavens and on the earth. Then he should say, I testify that La ilaha illallah, none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger. And then he can select whatever he likes to glorify Allah's praises. See Volume 1. Hadith number 831 Chapter on the invocation after the Salat, prayer Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him The people said, O Allah's Messenger, the rich people have got the highest degrees of prestige and permanent pleasures In this life and the life to come in the hereafter The Prophet peace be upon him asked, how is that? They said, the rich offer Salat, prayer as we offer Salat, and strive in Allah's cause as we do, and spend from their surplus wealth in charity, while we have no wealth to spend likewise. He said, Shall I not tell you a thing which by doing, you will catch up with those who are ahead of you, and supersede those who will come after you, and nobody will be able to do such a good deed as you do, except the ones who does the same deed as you do? That deed is to recite Subhanallah ten times, and Alhamdulillah ten times, and Allahu Akbar ten times after every Salat. Narrated Warrad, the freed slave of Al Mughira ibn Shu'bah. Al Mughira wrote to Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to say at the end of every Salat prayer after the Taslim, La ilaha illallah wahdahu, la sharika lahu. له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيته ولا معطي لما منعته ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد None has the right to be worshipped but Allah the one who has no partner all the kingdom is for him and all the praises are for him and he is omnipotent O oh Allah there is none who can withhold what you give and there is no one who can give what you withhold. Hard efforts by anyone, or luck, or riches, for anything cannot benefit one against your will and decisions. Chapter on the Statement of Allah and Invoke Allah for Them Quran, Chapter 9, Verse 103 And whoever prefers his brother, Muslim, to himself in his invocation. Abu Musa said, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O Allah, forgive Ubaid ibn Amr. O Allah, forgive the sins of Abdullah ibn Qais. Narrated Salam ibn al -Akwa. We went out with the Prophet, peace be upon him, to Khaybar. A man among the people said, O Amr, will you please recite to us some of your poetry? So Amr got down and started chanting among them, saying, By Allah, had it not been for Allah, we would have not been guided. Amr also said other poetic verses which I do not remember. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, Who is this camel driver? The people said, He is Amr ibn al-Akwa. He said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him. A man from the people said, O oh Allah's Messenger, would that you let us enjoy his company longer. When the people, Muslims, lined up, the battle started. And Amr was struck with his own sword by chance by himself, and he died. 
In the evening, the people made a large number of fires for cooking meals. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, What is this fire? What are you making the fire for? They said, For cooking the meat of donkeys. He said, Throw away what is in the pots and break the pots. A man said, O Allah's Prophet, May we throw away what is in them and wash them. He said, Never mind, you may do so. See Volume 5, Hadith number 4196. Footnote. If the Prophet, peace be upon him, made such an invocation for somebody, it was an indication that that person would be martyred. Narrated Ibn Abi Awfa, may Allah be pleased with them. Whenever a man brought his alms to the Prophet, peace be upon him, the Prophet, peace be upon him, would say, O Allah, bestow your blessings upon the family of so and so. When my father came to him with his alms, he said, O Allah, bestow your blessings upon the family of Abi Awfa. Narrated Jarir, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said to me, Will you relieve me from Dhul Khalasa? Dhul Khalasa was a nusub, an idol, etc., which the people used to worship, and it was called Al Kaaba al Yamaniya. I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I am a man who can't sit firm on horses. So he stroked my chest with his hand and said, O oh Allah, make him firm and make him a guide and well guided man. So I went out with 50 men from my tribe of Ahmas. The sub narrator, Sufyan, quoting Jarir, perhaps said, I went out with a group of men from my nation and came to Dhul Khalasa and burnt it, and then came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, I have not come to you till I left it like a camel with a skin disease. The Prophet, peace be upon him, then invoked good upon Ahmas and their cavalry fighters. See Volume 5, Hadith number 4357. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. Umm Sulaim said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Anas is your servant. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O oh Allah, increase his wealth and offspring, and bless for him whatever you give him. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace be upon him, heard a man reciting the Qur'an in the mosque. He said, May Allah bestow his mercy on him, as he made me remember such and such verse which I had missed in such and such surah. Narrated Abdullah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, divided something among the Muslims and distributed the shares of the booty. A man said, This division has not been made to please Allah. When I informed the Prophet, peace be upon him, about it, he became so furious that I noticed the signs of anger on his face, and he then said, May Allah bestow his mercy on Musa, Moses, for he was annoyed with more than this, yet he remained patient. Chapter on What Rhymed Prose Is Disapproved in Invocations Narrated Ikrima Ibn Abbas said, Preach to the people once a week, and if you won't, then preach them twice. But if you want to preach more, then let it be three times a week only. And do not make the people get bored with this Qur'an. If you come to some people who are engaged in a talk, don't start interrupting their talk by preaching, lest you should cause them to be bored. You should rather keep quiet and if they ask you, then preach to them at the time when they are eager to hear what you say. And avoid the use of rhymed prose in invocation. For I noticed that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and his companions always avoided it. Chapter on One Should Appeal to Allah with Determination, for nobody can force him against his will. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, When any one of you appeal to Allah for something, he should ask with determination and should not say, O oh Allah, if you wish, give me. For nobody can force Allah to do something against his will. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, None of you should say, O oh Allah, forgive me if you wish. O oh Allah, be merciful to me if you wish. 
but he should always appeal to Allah with determination, for nobody can force Allah to do something against his will. Chapter on One's Invocation is Granted or Accepted or Responded to by Allah if one does not show impatience. Narrated Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, The invocation of any one of you is granted or accepted or responded to by Allah if he does not show impatience by saying, I invoked Allah but my request has not been granted. Chapter on the Raising of the Hands on Invoking Allah And Abu Musa said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, invoked Allah and raised his hands so high that I saw the whiteness of his armpits. And Ibn Umar said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, raised his hands and said, O Allah, I am clear of what Khalid has done. Narrated Anas the Prophet, peace be upon him, raised his hands in invocation till I saw the whiteness of his armpits. Chapter on To Invoke Allah While Not Facing the Qibla Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. While the Prophet, peace be upon him, was delivering a khutbah, religious talk, on a Friday, a man stood up and said, O Allah's Messenger, invoke Allah to bless us with rain. The Prophet, peace be upon him, invoked Allah for rain. So the sky became overcast and it started raining till one could hardly reach his home. It kept on raining till the next Friday when the same man or another man got up and said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Invoke Allah to withhold the rain from us, for we have been drowned with heavy rain. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O Allah! Let it rain around us and not on us. Then the clouds started dispersing around al Medina, and rain ceased to fall on the people of al Medina. Chapter on to invoke Allah while facing the Qibla Narrated Abdullah ibn Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, went out to his musalla, praying place, to offer the salat, prayer, of istisqa. He invoked Allah for rain and then faced the Qibla and turned his rida, upper garment, inside out. Chapter on the Invocation of the Prophet, peace be upon him, on behalf of his servant, that he may have a long life and a big fortune. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. My mother said, O Allah's Messenger, please invoke Allah on behalf of your servant. He said, O Allah, increase his wealth and children and bestow your blessing on whatever you give him. Chapter on to invoke Allah at a time of distress. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to invoke Allah at the time of distress, saying, La ilaha illallahu al-azim al-halim. La ilaha illallahu rabbu samawati wal-ardi wa rabbu al-arsh al None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the Majestic, the Most Forbearing. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the Lord of the Heavens and the Earth, and the Lords of the Tremendous Throne. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to say at a time of distress, La ilaha illallah al-azim al-halim, La ilaha illallah rabbu al-arsh al-azim, لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات ورب الأرض ورب العرش الكريم. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the Majestic, the Most Forbearing. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the Lord of the Tremendous Throne. None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the Lord of the Heavens and the Lord of the Earth and the Lord of the Honorable Throne. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from the difficult moments of a calamity. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to seek refuge with Allah from the difficult moments of a calamity and from being overtaken by a shaqa, wretchedness in the hereafter or destruction, etc., and from being destined to an evil end and from the malicious joy of enemies. Sufyan said, This narration contained three items only, but I added one. 
I do not know which one that was. Footnote. From other sources, it seems that the expression, the malicious joy of enemies, is the item added by Sufyan. Chapter on the invocation of the Prophet peace be upon him. O Allah, let me join the highest companions. See Quran, chapter 4, verse 69. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. When Allah's messenger peace be upon him was healthy, he used to say, no prophet dies till he is shown his place in paradise. And then he is given the option to live or die. So when death approached him during his illness, and while his head was on my thigh, he became unconscious for a while. And when he recovered, he fixed his eyes on the ceiling and said, O oh Allah, let me join the highest companions. I said, so he does not choose us. Then I realized that it was the application of the statement he used to relate to us when he was healthy. So that was his last utterance before he died. That is, O oh Allah, let me join the highest companions. Chapter on the Invocation for Death or Life Narrated Qais, I came to Khabbab, who had been branded with seven brands, and he said, Had Allah's Messenger peace be upon him not forbidden us to invoke Allah for death, I would have invoked Allah for it. Footnote, regarding I came to Khabbab who had been branded with seven brands, as a treatment of an ailment he was suffering from. Narrated Qais, I came to Khabbab, who had been branded with seven brands over his abdomen. And I heard him saying, If the Prophet, peace be upon him, had not forbidden us to invoke Allah for death, I would have invoked Allah for it. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, None of you should long for death because of a calamity that had befallen on him. And if he cannot, but long for death, then he should say, O oh Allah, let me live as long as life is better for me, and take my life if death is better for me. Chapter on to invoke for Allah's blessings upon the children and rubbing their heads gently with the hand. And Abu Musa said, A boy was born to me, and the Prophet peace be upon him invoked for Allah's blessing upon it. Narrated as Sa'ib ibn Yazid, my aunt took me to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and said, O oh Allah's Messenger, my sister's son is sick. So he passed his hand over my head and invoked for Allah's blessing upon me, and then performed the ablution. I drank from the water of his ablution, and I stood behind him and looked at his khatam, the seal of prophethood, between his shoulders, and its size was like the button of al hajala a big size button of a house tent. Narrated Abu Aqil that his grandfather, Abdullah ibn Hisham, used to take him from the market, or to the market, the narrator is in doubt, and used to buy grain, and when Ibn Zubayr and Ibn Umar met him, they would say to him, Let us be your partners in trading, as the Prophet peace be upon him invoked for Allah's blessing upon you. He would then take them as partners, and he would sometimes gain a whole load carried by an animal which he would send home. Narrated Mahmud ibn Rabia, on whose face Allah's Messenger peace be upon him had thrown water from his mouth, the water having been taken from their well while he was still a young boy, who has not yet attained the age of puberty. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, infants used to be brought to the Prophet peace be upon him, and he used to invoke for Allah's blessings upon them. Once, an infant was brought to him, and it urinated on his clothes. He asked for water and poured it over the place of the urine, and did not wash his clothes. Narrated Abdullah ibn Thalab ibn Su'ayr, whose eye Allah's Messenger peace be upon him had touched, that he had seen Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas offering one rak'ah only for the witr prayer. Chapter on as salat upon the Prophet peace be upon him, saying, O Allah, send your graces, honors, blessings, and mercy, etc., upon the Prophet peace be upon him. Narrated Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla, Ka'b ibn Ujrah, met me and said, Shall I give you a present? Once the Prophet peace be upon him came to us and we said, O Allah's Messenger, we know how to greet you, 
but how to send salat upon you? He said, say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama sallayta ala ali Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. Allahumma barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin kama barakta ala Ibrahima innaka hamidun majid. O oh Allah, send your salat, graces, honors, blessings, and mercy, etc. on Muhammad and on Muhammad's family or his followers as you sent your salat on Prophet Ibrahim's family or his followers. O Allah, send your blessings on Muhammad and on Muhammad's family or his followers, as you sent your blessings on Ibrahim's family. You are indeed worthy of all praise, full of glory. Narrated Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him. We said, O Allah's Messenger, this is, that is, we know, the greeting to you. Will you tell us how to send salat on you? He said, Say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin, abdika wa rasulika, kama sallayta ala Ibrahima, wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin, kama barakta ala Ibrahima wa ali Ibrahima. O oh Allah, send your salat, graces, honors, blessings, and mercy, etc. on Muhammad, your slave and your messenger, as you sent your salat on Ibrahim. And send your blessings on Muhammad and his family, as you sent your blessings on Prophet Ibrahim and Ibrahim's family, or his followers. Chapter on Can one ask Allah to send salat on anybody other than the Prophet peace be upon him, and the statement of Allah, and invoke Allah for them. Verily, your invocations are a source of security for them. Quran, Chapter 9, Verse 103 Narrated Ibn Abi Awfa, whenever somebody brought alms to the Prophet peace be upon him, he used to say, Allahumma salli alayhi, O Allah, send your salat, graces and honors, blessings and mercy, etc. on him. Once, when my father brought his alms to him, he said, O Allah, send your salat on the family of Abi Awfa. Narrated Abu Humayd al-Sa'idi, the people said, O Allah's messenger, how should we send salat on you? He said, Say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin, wa azwajihi, wa dhurriyatihi, kama sallayta ala ali Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammadin, wa azwajihi, wa dhurriyatihi, kama barakta ala ali Ibrahim, innaka hamidun majid. O oh Allah, send your salat on Muhammad and his wives and his offspring, as you sent your salat on the family of Prophet Ibrahim. And also send your blessings on Muhammad and his wives and his offsprings, as you sent your blessings on the family of Ibrahim. You are indeed the one who deserves praises and glorifications. Chapter on the Statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him. O Allah, if I should harm somebody, let that be a means of purification and mercy for him. Narrated Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him that he heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, saying, O oh Allah, if I should ever abuse a believer, please let that be a means of bringing him near to you on the day of resurrection. Footnote. This does not mean that the Prophet, peace be upon him, might abuse somebody without reason, but it means that he might abuse somebody because of his apparent behavior while his intention was honest. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from Al-Fitan, trials and afflictions. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. Once the people started asking Allah's Messenger peace be upon him questions, and they asked so many questions that he became angry and ascended the pulpit and said, I will answer whatever questions you may ask me today. I looked right and left and saw everyone covering his face with his garment and weeping. Behold, there was a man who, on quarreling with the people, used to be called as a son of a person other than his father. He said, O Allah's Messenger, who is my father? The Prophet, peace be upon him, replied, Your father is Hudayfa. And then Umar got up and said, We accept Allah as our Lord and Islam as our religion and Muhammad, peace be upon him, as our Messenger. And we seek refuge with Allah from Al-Fitan, trials and afflictions. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, I have never seen a day like today in its good and its evil. 
for Paradise and the Hellfire were displayed in front of me, till I saw them just beyond this wall. Qatada, when relating this hadith, used to mention the following verse, O you who believe, ask not about things, which, if made plain to you, may cause you trouble. Quran, chapter 5, verse 101. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from being overpowered by other men. Narrated Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to Abu Talha, Choose one of your boys to serve me. So Abu Talha took me to serve the Prophet by giving me a ride behind him on his camel. So I used to serve Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him. Whenever he stayed somewhere, I used to hear him saying very often, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you, Allah, from worries and grief, from weakness and laziness, from miserliness and cowardice, from being heavily in debt, and from being overpowered by other men. I kept on serving him till he returned from the battle of Khaybar. He then brought Safiya, the daughter of Huyay, whom he had got from the booty. I saw him making a kind of cushion with a cloak or a garment for her. He then let her ride behind him when we reached a place called as sahba He prepared a special meal called Hayes and asked me to invite the men who came and ate. And that was the marriage banquet given on the consummation of his marriage to her. Then he proceeded till the mountain of Uhud appeared. Whereupon he said, This mountain loves us and we love it. When he approached al Medina, he said, O Allah, I make the land between its, that is Al-Madinah's, two mountains a sanctuary, as the Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, made Mecca a sanctuary. O Allah, bless them, the people of Al-Madinah, in their mud and their sa'a. Units of Measuring Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave. Narrated Umm Khalid I heard the Prophet, peace be upon him, seeking refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave. Narrated Mus'ab, Sa'ad used to recommend five statements and mentioned that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to recommend them. They were, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from miserliness, and I seek refuge with you from cowardice, and I seek refuge with you from being sent back to senile old age. And I seek refuge with you from the fitna, trial and affliction, of this world, that is, the fitna of ad dajjal etc. And I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the grave. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Two old ladies from among the Jews' ladies entered upon me and said, The dead are punished in their graves, but I thought they were telling a lie and did not believe them in the beginning. When they went away and the Prophet, peace be upon him, entered upon me, I said, O Allah's Messenger, two old ladies, and told him the whole story. He said, They told the truth. The dead are really punished, to the extent that all the animals hear the sound resulting from their punishment. Since then, I always saw him seeking refuge with Allah from the punishment of the grave in his Salat. Prayers Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from the fitna, trial and affliction of life and death. Narrated Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from weakness and laziness, from cowardice and from senile old age, and I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the grave, and I seek refuge with you from the fitna, trial and affliction, etc., of life and death. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from all kinds of sins and from being in debt. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from laziness and from senile old age, from all kinds of sins and from being in debt, from the fitna, trial and affliction, of the grave, and from the punishment in the grave, and from the fitna of fire, and from the punishment in the fire, and from the evil of the fitna of wealth. And I seek refuge with you from the fitna of poverty, and I seek refuge with you from the fitna of al-Masih al-Dajjal. O Allah, 
wash away my sins with the water of snow and hail, and cleanse my heart from all the sins as a white garment is cleansed from the filth. And let there be a long distance between me and my sins, as you made east and west far from each other. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from cowardice and laziness. Narrated Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say, O Allah, I seek refuge with you from worry and grief, from weakness and laziness, from cowardice and miserliness, from being heavily in debt, and from being overpowered by other men. See Hadith number 6363. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from miserliness. Narrated Mus'ab ibn Sa'd. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with them, used to recommend these five statements and say that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said so. And they are, O Allah, I seek refuge with you from miserliness. And I seek refuge with you from cowardice. And I seek refuge with you from being sent back to senile old age. And I seek refuge with you from the fitna, trial and affliction of this world. And I seek refuge with you from the punishment in the grave. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from senile old age. Narrated Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, used to seek refuge with Allah, saying, O Allah, I seek refuge with you from laziness, and I seek refuge with you from cowardice, and I seek refuge with you from senile old age, and I seek refuge with you from miserliness. Chapter on to invoke Allah to take away epidemic and diseases. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O Allah, make us love al Medina as you made us love Mecca, or more, and transfer the fever that is in it to al Juhfa. O Allah, bless our Mud and our Sa' units of measuring. Narrated Amr ibn Sa'd that his father said, In the year of Hajjatul Wada'a, the Prophet, peace be upon him, paid me a visit while I was suffering from an ailment that had brought me on the verge of death. I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, my sickness has reduced me to the bad state as you see, and I am a rich man but have no heirs except one daughter. Shall I give two-thirds of my property in charity? He said, No. I said, Then half of it. He said, Even one-third is too much. For to leave your inheritors wealthy is better than to leave them in poverty, begging from people. And know that whatever you spend in Allah's cause, you will get reward for it, even for the morsel of food which you put in your wife's mouth. I said, O oh Allah's Messenger, will I be left behind my companions in Mecca? He said, If you remain behind, whatever good deeds you will do for Allah's sake, will raise and upgrade you to a higher position in Allah's consideration. Maybe you will live longer, so that some people may benefit by you, and some others may get harmed by you. O oh Allah, complete the emigration of my companions, but do not turn them on their heels. But the poor Sa'd ibn Khawla, not the above-mentioned Sa'd, died in Mecca. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, lamented or pitied for him as he died in Mecca. See Volume 5, Hadith number 4409. Footnote. The Prophet, peace be upon him, wished that none of the immigrants should die somewhere other than al Medina, the place of their immigration. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from senile old age and from the fitna, trial and affliction of this world, and from the fitna of the hellfire. Narrated Sa'd. Seek refuge with Allah by saying the words which the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say while seeking refuge with Allah. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from cowardice, and I seek refuge with you from miserliness, and I seek refuge with you from being sent back to reaching a degraded senile old age, and seek refuge with you from the fitna, trial and affliction of this world, and from the punishment in the grave. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from laziness, from senile old age, from being in debt, and from committing sins. O oh Allah, 
I seek refuge with you from the punishment of the fire, the fitna, trial and affliction of the fire, and the fitna, trial and affliction of the grave, the punishment in the grave, and the evil of the fitna of the wealth, the evil of the fitna of poverty, and from the evil of the fitna caused by Al-Masih al-Dajjal. O Allah, wash away my sins with the water of snow and hail, and cleanse my heart from the sins as a white garment is cleansed of filth, and let there be a far away distance between me and my sins, as you have set far away the east and the west from each other. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from the fitna, trial and affliction, etc. of wealth. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to seek refuge with Allah by saying, O Allah, I seek refuge with you from the fitna, trial and affliction, of the fire, and from the punishment in the fire, and I seek refuge with you from the fitna of the grave, and I seek refuge with you from the punishment in the grave, and I seek refuge with you from the fitna of wealth, and I seek refuge with you from the fitna of poverty, and I seek refuge with you from the fitna of al-Masih al-Dajjal. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from the fitna, trial and affliction of poverty. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say, O Allah, I seek refuge with you from the fitna, trial and affliction, etc., of the fire, the punishment of the fire, the fitna of the grave, punishment of the grave, and the evil of the fitna of wealth, and the evil of the fitna of poverty. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from the evil of the fitna of Al-Masih al-Dajjal. O Allah, cleanse my heart with the water of snow and hail, and cleanse my heart from all sins as a white garment is cleansed from filth. And let there be a far away distance between me and my sins, as you made the east and west far away from each other. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from laziness, sins, and from being in debt. Chapter on the Invocation to Invoke Allah for an Increase in Wealth and Offspring and for Allah's Blessing Narrated Umm Sulaim that she said, O Allah's Messenger, Anas is your servant, so please invoke for Allah's Blessing for him. The Prophet peace be upon him said, O Allah, increase his wealth and offspring and bless for him whatever you give him. Chapter on to invoke Allah for an increase of offspring, along with his blessings. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. Umm Sulaim said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, Anas is your servant, so please invoke for Allah's blessings for him. He, peace be upon him, said, O Allah, increase his wealth and offspring, and bless for him whatever you give him. Chapter on the Invocation on Making Istikhara An Appeal to Allah to Guide You on the Right Path as Regards a Certain Matter Narrated Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to teach us the Istikhara for every matter as he used to teach us the Surah from the Qur'an. He used to say, If any one of you intends to do something, he should offer a two rak'ah prayer other than the obligatory Salat prayer. And then say, Allahumma inni astakhiruka bi ilmika, wa astakhiruka bi kudratika, wa as'aluka min fadlika al-azim, fa innaka taqdiru wa la aqdiru, wa ta'lamu wa la a'lamu, wa anta allamu al-ghuyub. Allahumma in kunta ta'lamu anna hadha al-amra khayrun li, fi dini, wa ma'ashi, wa aqibati amri. Or said, fi ajili amri wa ajilihi, faqdurhu li. وَإِنْ كُنْتَ تَعْلَمُ أَنَّ هَذَا الْأَمْرَ شَرٌ لِي فِي دِينِي وَمَعَاشِي وَعَاقِبَةِ أَمْرِي Or said, فِي عَاجِلِ أَمْرِي وَآجِلِهِ فَاصْرِفْهُ عَنِّي وَاصْرِفْنِي عَنْهُ وَاقْدُرْ لِيَ الْخَيْرَ حَيْثُ كَانَ ثُمَّ رَدِّنِي بِهِ O oh Allah, I consult you as you are all-knowing and appeal to you to give me power as you are omnipotent and ask you for your great favor for you have power but I don't. And you have knowledge, but I don't have. And you know all hidden matters. O oh Allah, if you know that this matter is good for me in my religion, my livelihood, and for my life in the hereafter, or said, for my present and future life, then do it for me. And if you know that this matter is evil 
not good for me, in my religion, my livelihood, and for my life in the hereafter, or said, for my present and future life, then keep it away from me, and take me away from it, and choose what is good for me, wherever it is, and please me with it. Then he should mention his matter, need. Chapter on Invoking Allah While Performing Ablution Narrated Abu Musa, the Prophet peace be upon him asked for some water and performed the ablution, and then raised his hands towards the sky and said, O Allah, forgive Ubaid Abi Amr. I saw the whiteness of his armpits while he was raising his hands, and he peace be upon him added, O Allah, upgrade him over many of your human creatures on the day of resurrection. Chapter on Invoking Allah While Ascending a High Place Narrated Abu Musa, We were in the company of the Prophet, peace be upon him, on a journey. And whenever we ascended a high place, we used to say takbir. Allahu Akbar, Allah is the most great. In a loud voice. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O people, be kind to yourselves, for you are not calling upon a deaf or an absent one, but you are calling an all-hearer and an all-seer. Then he came to me as I was reciting silently. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. He said, O Abdullah ibn Qais, say, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله, for it is one of the treasures of paradise. Or he said, Shall I tell you a word which is one of the treasures of paradise? It is, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is neither might nor power except with Allah. Chapter on Invoking Allah While Going Down a Valley In this respect, there is a narration from Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him. Chapter on the Invocation While Going on a Journey or Returning from a Journey In this respect, there is a narration from Anas. Narrated Ibn Umar, may Allah be pleased with them. Whenever Allah's Messenger peace be upon him returned from a ghazwa, or Hajj, or Umrah, he used to say, Allahu Akbar, three times whenever he went up a high place. And then he used to say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamdu, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Ayibuna ta'ibuna, abiduna li rabbina hamidun. Sadaq Allahu wa'dahu, wa nasara abdahu. وهزم الأحزاب وحده None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, the one and has no partner. To him belongs the kingdom, and all praise be to him. And he is omnipotent. We are returning from our journeys with repentance and worshipping and praising our Lord. He, Allah, has fulfilled his promise and helped his slave. And he alone defeated all the confederates of disbelievers. Chapter on Invocation for a Bridegroom Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, seeing a yellow mark of perfume on the clothes of Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, said, What about you? Abdul Rahman replied, I have married a woman with a mahr of gold equal to a date stone. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, May Allah bestow his blessing on you in your marriage. Give a walima, wedding banquet, even with one sheep. Narrated Jabir, may Allah be pleased with him. My father died and left behind seven or nine daughters. And I married a matron. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Did you get married, O Jabir? I replied, Yes. He asked, Is she a virgin or a matron? I replied, She is a matron. He said, why didn't you marry a virgin girl, so that you might play with her and she with you? Or you might make her laugh and she make you laugh? I said, my father died, leaving seven or nine girls orphans, and I did not like to bring a young girl like them, so I married a woman who can look after them. He said, may Allah bestow his blessing on you. Chapter on what one should say before having sexual intercourse with his wife. Narrated Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, If any one of you 
when intending to have a sexual intercourse with his wife, says, Bismillah, Allahumma jannibna shaytana, wa jannib shaytana ma razaqtana. In the name of Allah, O Allah, protect us from Satan, and prevent Satan from approaching the child you may bestow us with. And if the couple are distant to have a child out of that very sexual relation, then Satan will never be able to harm that child. Chapter on the Statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Our Lord, give us in this world that which is good, and in the hereafter that which is good, and save us from this torment of the fire. Quran, Chapter 2, Verse 201 Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. The most frequent invocation of the Prophet, peace be upon him, was, O Allah, give us in this world that which is good, and in the hereafter that which is good, and save us from the torment of the fire. Quran, chapter 2, verse 201. Chapter on to seek refuge with Allah from the fitna, trial and affliction of the world. Narrated Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, may Allah be pleased with them. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to teach us these words as he used to teach us the book, the Qur'an. O Allah, I seek refuge with you from miserliness, and I seek refuge with you from cowardice, and I seek refuge with you from being sent back to senile old age, and I seek refuge with you from the fitna, trial and affliction, of the world and from the punishment in the grave. Chapter on to repeat the invocation. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, was affected by magic, so much that he used to think that he had done something which in fact he did not do, and he invoked his Lord, Allah, for a remedy. Then one day he said, O Aisha, do you know that Allah has advised me as to the problem I consulted him about? Aisha said, O oh Allah's Messenger, what's that? He said, Two men came to me, and one of them sat at my head, and the other at my feet. And one of them asked his companion, What is wrong with this man? The latter replied, He is under the effect of magic. The former asked, Who has worked magic on him? The latter replied, Labid ibn al-A'sam. The former asked, With what did he work the magic? The latter replied, With a comb and the hair, which are stuck to the comb, and the skin of pollen, of a date palm tree. The former asked, Where is that? The latter replied, It is in Darwan. Darwan was a well, in the dwelling place of the tribe of Bani Zurayq. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, went to that well and returned to Aisha, saying, By Allah, the water of the well was as red as the infusion of henna, a kind of plant used for dyeing hair, and the date palm trees looked like the heads of devils. Aisha added, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, came to me and informed me about the well. I asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, O Allah's Messenger, why didn't you take it out? He said, As for me, Allah has cured me, and I hated to draw the attention of the people to such evil, which they might learn and harm others with. Narrated Hisham's father, Aisha said, Allah's messenger peace be upon him was bewitched, so he invoked Allah repeatedly, requesting him to cure him from that magic. Hisham then narrated the above narration. See volume 7. Hadith number 5763 and 5765. Chapter on to invoke Allah against Al Mushrikeen. Polytheists, pagans, idolaters, and disbelievers in the oneness of Allah and in His Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. And Ibn Mas'ud said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, O Allah, help me against them by sending seven years of drought upon them, the infidels, like the seven years of drought of the days of Prophet Yusuf, Joseph. He also said, O Allah, destroy Abu Jahl. 
and Ibn Umar said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, invoked Allah in the Salat, prayer, saying, O Allah, curse so and so, and so and so, till Allah revealed, Not for you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, but for Allah, is the decision. Quran, chapter 3, verse 128. Narrated Ibn Abi Awfa, may Allah be pleased with them. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, asked for Allah's wrath upon the Ahzab, confederates, saying, O Allah, the revealer of the holy book, and the one swift at reckoning, defeat the confederates, defeat them and shake them. Narrated Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, when the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Sami'allahu liman hamidah, Allah heard him who sent his praises to him. In the last rak'ah of the Isha prayer, he used to invoke Allah, saying, O Allah, save Ayyash ibn Abi Rabi'ah. O Allah, save Al-Walid ibn Al-Walid. O Allah, save the weak people among the believers. O Allah, be hard on the tribe of Mudar. O Allah, inflict years of drought upon them like the years of drought of the Prophet Yusuf, Joseph. Narrated Anas, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, sent a Sariya, army unit, consisting of men called al qurra and all of them were martyred. I had never seen the Prophet, peace be upon him, so sad over anything, as he was over them. So he said, Qanut, Invocation in the Salat, prayer, for one month in the Fajr prayer, invoking for Allah's wrath upon the tribe of Usayya. And he used to say, The people of Usayya have disobeyed Allah and his messenger. Narrated Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. The Jews used to greet the Prophet, peace be upon him, by saying, As-Sammu alayka, that is, death be upon you. So I understood what they said, and I said to them, Alaykum as-Sammu wal-la'natu, that is, death and Allah's curse be upon you. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Be gentle and calm, O Aisha, as Allah likes gentleness in all affairs. I said, O Allah's Prophet, didn't you hear what they said? He said, Didn't you hear me answering them back? By saying, Alaykum, that is, the same be upon you. Narrated Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him. We were in the company of the Prophet, peace be upon him, on the day of the battle of Al Khandaq, the trench. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, May Allah fill there, the infidels, graves and houses with fire, as they have kept us so busy that we could not offer the middle salat, prayer, till the sun had set, and that salat was the asr prayer. Chapter on Invocation in Favor of Al-Mushrikeen Polytheists, Pagans, Idolaters, and Disbelievers in the Oneness of Allah and in His Messenger Muhammad, peace be upon him. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. At-Tufayl ibn Amr came to Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and said, O Allah's Messenger, the tribe of Daus has disobeyed Allah and his Messenger and refused to embrace Islam. Therefore, invoke Allah's wrath upon them. The people thought that the Prophet, peace be upon him, would invoke Allah's wrath for them. But he said, O Allah, guide the tribe of Daus and let them come to us. Chapter on the Statement of the Prophet, peace be upon him, O Allah, forgive my past and future sins. Narrated Abu Musa, the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to invoke Allah with the following invocation, رَبِّ اغْفِرْ لِي خَطِيئَتِي وَجَهْلِي وَإِسْرَافِي فِي أَمْرِي كُلِّهِ وَمَا أَنْتَ أَعْلَمُ بِهِ مِنِّي اللهم اغْفِرْ لِي خَطَايَايَا وَعَمْدِي وَجَهْلِي وَجِدِّي وَكُلُّ ذَلِكَ عِنْدِي اللهم اغفر لي ما قدمت وما أخرت وما أسررت وما أعلنت أنت المقدم وأنت المؤخر 
وأنت على كل شيء قدير. O oh my Lord, forgive my sins and my ignorance and my exceeding the limits, that is all my great sins. And what you know better than I, O oh Allah, forgive my mistakes, those done intentionally or out of my ignorance, or without, or with seriousness. And I confess that all such mistakes are done by me. O oh Allah, forgive my sins of the past, which I did openly or secretly, and also of the future. You are the one who makes the things go ahead, and you are the one who delays them, and you are the omnipotent. Narrated Abu Musa al-Ash'ari, the Prophet peace be upon him used to invoke Allah saying, اللهم اغفر لي خطيئتي وجهلي وإسرافي في أمري وما أنت أعلم به مني اللهم اغفر لي هزلي وجدي وخطئي وعمدي وكل ذلك عندي O oh Allah, forgive my mistakes and my ignorance and my exceeding the limits that is my great sins and forgive whatever you know better than I O oh Allah Forgive the wrong that I have done jokingly or seriously, and forgive my accidental and intentional errors, all that is present in me. Chapter on to invoke Allah during a particular time on Friday, when the invocation is accepted. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Abu Qasim, the Prophet peace be upon him, said, On Friday there is an hour, opportune, lucky time, and if a Muslim happens to be offering salat, prayer, and invoking Allah for something good during that time, Allah will surely fulfill his request. The Prophet peace be upon him pointed out with his hand. We thought that he wanted to illustrate the shortness of that time. Chapter on the Statement of the Prophet peace be upon him Our invocation against the Jews will be accepted by Allah, but their invocations against us will not be accepted. Narrated Ibn Abi Mulaika Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, The Jews came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said to him, As-Samu alayka, that is, death be upon you. He replied, the same on you. Aisha said to them, Death be upon you, and may Allah curse you and shower his wrath upon you. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Be gentle and calm, O Aisha. Be gentle and beware of being harsh and of saying evil things. She said, Didn't you hear what they said? He said, Didn't you hear what I replied to them? I have returned their statement to them, and my invocation against them will be accepted but theirs against me will not be accepted. Chapter on the Saying of Amin Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, When the Imam says, Amin, then you should all say, Amin, for the angels say Amin at that time. And he whose Amin coincides with the Amin of the angels. All his past sins will be forgiven. Chapter on the superiority of saying La ilaha illallah None has the right to be worshipped but Allah. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said Whoever says La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu Lahul mulku wa lahul hamdu wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir None has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone, who has no partner. To him belongs the kingdom of the universe, and for him are all the praises, and he has the power to do everything. One hundred times will get the same reward as given for manumitting ten slaves, and one hundred good deeds will be written in his accounts, and one hundred sins will be deducted from his accounts, and it, his saying, will be a shield for him from Satan on that day till night. And nobody will be able to do a better deed except the one who does more than he. Narrated Amr ibn Maymun, whoever recites it, 
That is the invocation in the above hadith number 6403. Ten times will be as if he manumitted one of Ismail's descendants. Narrated Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the same hadith from the Prophet peace be upon him, saying, Whoever recites it ten times will be as if he had manumitted one of Ismail's Prophet Ishmael's descendants. Chapter on the superiority of tasbih, that is, saying subhanallah, glorified be Allah. Footnote. I deem Allah above all those unsuitable things ascribed to him, and free him resembling anything whatsoever in any respect, and I glorify his praises. Also see glossary for subhanallah. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's messenger peace be upon him said, Whoever says, Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, Glorified be Allah, the most great, Glorified be Allah and praised be He, 100 times a day, will be forgiven all his sins, even if they were as much as the foam of the sea. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, There are two expressions which are very easy for the tongue to say, but they are very heavy in the balance, and are very dear to the most gracious, Allah, and they are, Subhanallah al azim and Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Chapter on the superiority of dhikr of Allah, remembering Allah, that is, glorifying and praising Him, etc. Narrated Abu Musa, may Allah be pleased with him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The example of the one who remembers, glorify the praises of his Lord Allah, in comparison to the one who does not remembers, glorify the praises of his Lord, is that of a living creature compared to a dead one. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, Allah has some angels who look for those who remember, glorify the praises of Allah on the roads and paths. And when they find some people remembering, glorifying the praises of Allah, they call each other, saying, Come to the object of your pursuit. He added, Then the angels encircle them with their wings up to the nearest heaven to us. He added, after those people remembered, glorify the praises of Allah, and the angels go back to Allah, their Lord asks them, those angels, though he knows better than them, what do my slaves say? The angels reply, they say, Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar, and Alhamdulillah. Allah then says, did they see me? The angels reply, no. By Allah, they did not see you. Allah says, How it would have been if they saw me? The angels reply, If they saw you, they would worship you more devoutly and remember you, glorify your praises more deeply, and declare your freedom from any resemblance to anything more often. Allah says to the angels, What do they ask me for? The angels reply, they ask you for paradise. Allah says to the angels, Did they see it? The angels say, No, by Allah, O Lord, they did not see it. Allah says, How it would have been if they saw it? The angels say, If they saw it, they would have greater covetousness for it and would seek it with greater zeal and would have greater desire for it. Allah says, From what do they seek refuge? The angels reply, They seek refuge from the hell fire. Allah says, Did they see it? The angels say, No, by Allah, O Lord, they did not see it. Allah says, How it would have been if they saw it? The angels say, If they saw it, they would flee from it with the extreme fleeing and would have extreme fear from it. Then Allah says, I make you witness that I have forgiven them. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him added, One of the angels would say, There was so and so amongst them, and he was not one of them.
but he had just come for some need. Allah would say, These are those people whose companions will not be reduced to misery. Chapter on what is said regarding the statement لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله That is, there is neither might nor power except with Allah. Narrated Abu Musa al-Ash'ari The Prophet, peace be upon him, started ascending a high place or hill. A man amongst his companions ascended it and shouted in a loud voice لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر None has the right to be worshipped but Allah, and Allah is the most great. At that time, Allah's Messenger peace be upon him was riding his mule. Allah's Messenger peace be upon him said, You are not calling upon a deaf or an absent one. And added, O Abu Musa, or O Abdullah, Shall I tell you a sentence from the treasures of paradise? I said, Yes. He said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Chapter on Allah has 100 names less one, that is 99. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. Allah has 99 names, that is 100 less one, and whoever complies with it, believes in their meanings, and acts accordingly, will enter paradise, and Allah is witr, one and loves Al-Witr. Chapter on Preaching at Intervals Narrated Shaqiq, while we were waiting for Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Yazid ibn Muawiyah came. I said to him, Will you sit down? He said, No, but I will go into the house of ibn Mas'ud, and let your companion ibn Mas'ud come out to you, and if he should not come out, I will come out and sit with you. Then Abdullah came out holding the hand of Yazid, addressed us saying, I know that you are assembled here, but the reason that prevents me from coming out to you is that Allah's Messenger peace be upon him used to preach us at intervals during the days, lest we should become bored. 